Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and I begin this episode with a bit of a problem that's sort of fading away there. I upgraded my RO Kerbalism configurations and it says that it's incompatible with USI colony tools which I sort of want. Actually originally it said that it was incompatible with background resources and colony tools. Background resources was my fault. It was left over from TAC life support. And that might have been causing me some of my problems, actually. That I don't know for sure. About uh, TAC Life Support, I deleted the TAC Life Support folder, but forgot to delete the fo another folder that came with it called Repo Soft Tech. That's deleted now. But I'm not sure if I want to delete Colony Tools, because I sort of like USI, the USI system. I wanted to try it out on Mars, and I figured that it might help with establishing a colony on Mars. So, yeah, but we have other things to do. This is a test install, not test install, sorry, test save. And it's basically an unzipped version of a backup um, that I had of the main save uh, from a little while back. So what I want to do is test out um, the water recycler. Somebody suggested I do that on the ground. I don't think you can do it on the ground. I don't know if it'll consume the resources on the ground. You have to sort of do it in space maybe. But there's the Lynx spacecraft, uh, at least the um, interior of it. And uh, we want um, Kerbalism stuff. And we want the external life support system. And we'll configure it for for the water recycler. And we'll just have that well pressure control is fine we probably need some solar panels okay so here we are and uh, as you can see there's no consumption of oxygen on the ground or uh, the water and food go in chunks so we won't be able to tell ex until a few hours in there's a null ref going on here but let's just cheat into orbit and see what's going on so here we are Maybe the null ref is the humidity thing, because I saw that they removed the humidity thing. Anyway, we've got a water recycler running, but they're not consuming any oxygen. The boil off of the liquid methane and liquid oxygen is happening. But there's nothing being consumed. So maybe that's that we're about to run. I don't want to extend the soul panels right now. That's enough. 14 hours by now they should have consumed some water and food. Um, so maybe the colony tools is interfering with that, but what if it's just because it's my pod? Let's take a look at one of the stock pods instead. Okay, here we are with the Mark II lander can, and whoop, there's some lag here. That's not a good sign. Does it have no refs? Um, come on. Well, there's no oxygen consumption here. There are no refs. There is oxygen consumption in space though, and the food and water gets consumed in chunks so we can't see it right now. We'll have to time warp to check. And we want to check on the water recycler too. We've got an air pump and a pressure controller as well. That's more than I was expecting. Anyway, but the, it says water recycler on there. We've got water consumption and wastewater production. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything with that wastewater. Otherwise it'd be diminishing. We do have food consumption and more waste production. But still, nothing with the wastewater with the recycler. So the recycler is not working. And food water and oxygen consumption on my pod isn't working even though it works on here. Now, food water and oxygen consumption on the Lynx spacecraft did work before. So something has changed. Let me dump colony tools and see if that fixes it. Because we still have colony tools in here. And uh, yeah, we'll see whether that's the issue. Or... And then I'll check what happens if I put the old stuff back in. Of course I zipped it up and made sure that I had that as a backup. So apparently Jeb has some pimples or something. Anyway, or is that stubble? That might be stubble. Anyway, uh, so let's see what happens like that. Okay, so this time when we go into the save, there's no messages because I deleted colony tools. 
and we're gonna see about the systems okay first of all we do have null refs there was a thing that passed by there oh I missed it it's already gone in the field of all the null refs this is not a good sign and let's just quickly check in orbit oxygen com uh, well the consumption probably will happen the question is whether the recycler happens there's one in there just gonna let it go for a day there's no sign of recycling nope there has not been any sign of recycling at all okay and then there's still the subject data C tour thing that I don't understand. Okay, um, let me try my own pod, the Lynx spacecraft. And here I thought that checking the recycler on the ground would be simple, but then I had to upgrade things. All right, set orbit. Um, still no oxygen consumption, so I'm assuming it just doesn't work. Otherwise, we'd immediately see the oxygen consumption like with the lander can. Okay, so this doesn't work. I'm going to revert uh, to what I had before and see how that works out. Let me just check. We have null refs, right? Yes, we do. Um, I'll revert to what I had before plus colony tools first. So I'll put colony tools back in and see what happens. Okay, so I put back in my previous versions of Kerbalism and, well, the version of Kerbalism shouldn't have changed. It's just the uh, RO configurations of Kerbalism. But um, yeah, if we take a look at Alt-F12, there's no issue here. And uh, let's just cheat this into orbit, set orbit. But still, I don't see any oxygen consumption. So at least this time, yeah, there's no, uh, no null ref to blame on it, blame for it. It's not consuming nitrogen either. Well, uh, let's check the lander can and see if the water recycler works there. Okay, consumption is working still. And how about water recycling? Do we get that? Not really. Still accumulating the way it was before and no sign of recycling. Maybe if it's, uh, it's only if the wastewater is full up or something? That shouldn't be the case. Okay, so I'm definitely missing something now, because, well, here in the dialogue it says that it's going to consume the food in 14 days, water, 14 days, oxygen, I said it to 14 days, nitrogen, lithium hydroxide, and all that business, right? And I take it outside, and, uh, well, let's just see, this doesn't really have a name right now, is it even, is it like not tracked by this? This is just a unknown vessel. I haven't put any other parts on it. So it's just got it's got its internal scrubber, humidity controller and pressure controller. And it still doesn't show up here. And it's definitely not experiencing any of the consumption. Do I have to like name it? I didn't have to name the Mark II lander can and it worked. I don't know. Hold on. Let me make sure. Well, let's rename vessel. Uh, oh, it's marked as debris. Is that why? Okay, now it's tracked. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> I understand what my problem was. If it's marked as debris, it's Im immune to the Kerbal Kerbal's experiencing any sort of consumption. Okay, but do I really want to go back to the other, the more recent configurations which throw up the null refs? Because right now I've got no null refs and that makes me happy. There's a little bit of ScanSat stuff going on here, but otherwise the latest RO configurations for Kerbalism throw up a whole bunch of null refs even for the stock one, the Mark II lander can. I don't know why this is uh, by default labeled debris. I'll change that in the configuration. I know how to do that. But anyway, um, interesting thing there that the resources aren't read on stuff that's marked to debris. That could be exploited, but of course I won't. Um, yeah, let me think about this and I'll come back to you. 
I mean, it's sort of a curious thing that it seemed to work fine before. We have launched a Lynx spacecraft and resources were consumed on this before. And also it reads the consumption in here just fine. Interesting. But anyway, I'll fix that. And it's just a curiosity here, but I still can't get the water recycler to work. And that's regardless of what part I use. So, and that's gonna be a big problem. Maybe I'll have to make my own part for that. Okay, so I've hastily made my own crappy water recycler unit. That's it. ISS water recovery system based on a paper uh, describing the use of ISS uh, life support systems for a Mars mission. And uh, it gave the mass of the base system and also the base system with three spares. I've used the base system with three spares for the mass of this, which is about 2.1 tons. It's a little bit bigger than the the Kerbalism water recycler, and I think that's probably realistic, to be honest. Uh, but it looks crappy because I didn't spend much time on it. I think um, about an hour, <laughs> basically, uh, just to put that together. Though I, that's, That actually took longer than I thought it would. Anyway, uh, so, yep, it's, it's water recycling properly. The question is whether it'll do it uh, when we're not focused on the vessel, right? That's a separate thing. But you can see... Uh, we've got some wastewater. If I time warp, it's actually consuming the wastewater and producing water as it should. Um, the recycler unit is using the stock uh, module that turns ore into, you know, mod propellant or whatever. And so that is what it is. It's just using the stock module. So if the stock module works during time warp, uh, this should too, in theory, I guess. And let's see. The percentage of recycling should be the same as for the ISS. Because some of the water comes from food, though, it's a little bit deceptive. I might want to turn it down just for more of a challenge. It seems to nearly be perfect recycling in this situation. I'll see. I'll have to tweak the numbers. Yeah, because you get some water from food, uh, that ends up leading to the water being constantly topped off and there not being any wastewater. Plenty of waste though, of course. So just to recap, the situation is this. I tried to uh, install the latest Aro Kerbalism configurations, and I'm not using those because they threw a null ref and it didn't matter whether it was this pod or the Mark II lander cam. So both had null refs and uh, then I reverted to earlier stuff and I got confused because apparently Kerbalism does not do life support on anything that is marked as a as debris. And I didn't realize that this had been marked as debris. I guess it has always been in a sort of shell and that shell part was not marked as debris and so that's why it worked. But uh, yeah, we have fixed that now this is not debris anymore and so the life support is working properly but in any case no matter what combination of mods i had but what combination of kerbalism and ro configuration the water recycler didn't work no matter what so i have made my own water recycler and we will see whether it works during time warp time warp or not as far as i know its recycling ratio is correct uh, but maybe it's a little bit too powerful I'll take a look at the details. All right, so we can proceed on with other things now. I am satisfied with the test. We will add this recycler to our um, life support module for the Mars Transfer Vehicle 2. Okay, we are now in the actual save and we are launching the Quest Airlock with some supplies and with the water recycler to the Mars Transfer Vehicle number two. So, throttle down. And let's get started. It is a Sajita Heavy. And off we go. So after this, I'll want to temporarily send crew to the Mars Transfer Vehicle. Uh, first of all, to remove that extra docking port, I think it was, on the tail. So an EVA there, but also just to check out what the supply count really is. 
so once they're on board, we'll have Kerbalism tell us how much... I mean, I think I have enough supplies, but maybe we have too much supplies because we have some supplies in the other modules. And there's more supplies that we need to keep track of. Of course, it's not just food, water, and oxygen. It's the nitrogen and lithium hydroxide. So we'll see. We've got full shielding on this as well this time. Uh, previously, we only had half shielding on the Quest Airlock. Okay, getting ready for staging here. And the boosters are away. And throttle up. Okay, we have fairing separation. And what you see here is the docking port, then the recovery water recovery system and then lithium hydroxide, the quest airlock, and then more supplies back here. Oh, I think we got one of those problems. Anyway, um, I haven't fixed the script yet, but it's all right. I can take it from here. Okay, and shut down 234 by 196, and we got, probably could have carried a little bit more, but then again, uh, it would overload our uh, destination. I probably should have put some more wastewater containment in here. Also, that might have been good. Anyway, time for me to finagle a rendezvous. Okay, it was a simple two rendezvous burn sort of thing, and we are meeting up with our target now. Uh, we're only, I mean, we're still 8.8 .8 kilometers away though, but uh, not approaching too fast. And probably we'll want the tug to suck some, some uh, methane and oxygen out of this tank before heading out and probably put some electric charge back in. Let's uh, top that off right now before I forget. We didn't have any solar panels or anything over here, so... Okay, well, the problem is I can't do a whole lot more with the RCS, so I, I'll just bring a tug out to grab this now. Uh, let's... Well, I'll try and zero out the velocity with the RCS, but it's not very powerful, of course. We need the one with the circular docking port at the center, which is... Which is the one that's docked nicely, unfortunately. <laughs> I forgot, oh, I, we need to bring another truss over here. Forgot about that. Should have brought that up. Very carefully moving out of here. Well, I've got so much fuel in here that we're not going to be able to grab too much from the spent stage. Orientation-wise, we'll have to see. And I've got force roll on zero, but it's just a matter of where we want the airlock to point at. Okay, we've docked, topping off the tug. Again, could have taken better advantage of this. But alas, anyway, decouple. Okay, and let's deorbit this. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, all in a row. Don't know how often that happens, but. Oh, Jupiter's right there too. Well, that that's probably ecliptic right there. I don't know. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Venus, Mercury. Stunning. Okay, we are approaching. But we're sort of on the wrong side of the Mars transfer vehicle right now. Don't think I can target it from here. Well, we'll have to find some way to scooch over there. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the thrusters want to fire at the same time because of the balance. Okay, we are headed towards the docking port and are expecting some sunlight soon, I think. Taking a risk time warping close to it because I'm getting impatient here. 
Okay, here we go. Closing in. And we have docked. Okay, some fluctuations in megajoules and everything. And yeah, well, the question is, how much supplies do we really have? I wonder why there's short four units of shielding somewhere. That's irritating. Anyway, um, well, you know, it just says perpetual right now. We have to bring Kerbals up, and I'd rather get the supplies on board before we cycle it up to a high orbit. We still need to top off uh, certain things. Uh, the xenon gas is full up. The methane oxygen could do with some extra. But uh, let's see. Only a little bit there. A little bit more here. If we could have docked that Sajida up or staged this, that would have been helpful, but it didn't have a docking port on its own. I really should add docking ports to those so that they could uh, be brought in. But anyway, that's an afterthought. For now, I think we'll bring up some crew here with the Lynx spacecraft. And what we needed to do was to remove um, this docking port here. Right? Yeah, it's supposed to be RCS ports all around on that module. So this docking port needs to be removed via EVA. And I would like to get a truss up here, but that's not really something we can do with a, uh, a Lynx launch. I didn't really have a place to hide a little truss piece somewhere. It's not like the Apollo uh, mission with like space underneath on the top of the S4B stage. Anyway, so that's what's next. All right, so here we are with Kakus Kerman, Obman Kerman, Jemjil Kerman, and uh, there is a fourth one, Hans Kerman. And that's two pilots and two engineers, and they'll be going to the supply vessel first to take off that docking port, and then on to Mars Transfer Vehicle 2. So we'll just run Sajita. I hope that's all right. Oh, yeah, right. It's gone. Oh, no. I want that. Retract that. Retract. Quickly, quickly, quickly retract, retract, retract. I shouldn't have, I, uh, in the VAB I had it pre-retracted, but of course the script is told to retract the, the vehicle, I guess vertical assembly building or whatever you want to call it, I didn't, I haven't named it myself, but, uh, yep, that thing. I have to remember to cover it up before using the KOS script. Anyway, we managed to, uh, retract it quickly enough, I think. been a while since we've seen a crude launch. Okay, G-Force is building up. We're at 3 Gs now. It should throttle down to limit Gs. Uh, 45 seconds left in the burn. Roughly. Depends on how long it takes when it's throttled down, of course. Alright, and... Getting ready for separation. Separation and ignition. And nozzle extension is good. All right. Okay, getting ready for a launch escape system jettison. And that didn't happen. Okay. Well, we have enough fuel to carry it for a ways. I'd rather not do anything dramatic just yet. Just in case it, well. I could put those up that as a buffer. All right, I'm gonna stage the launch escape system. Okay, and we've made orbit. Inclination is okay. We just need to wait a little while to catch up to it. We should probably make sure that our solar panels are better aligned with the sun. And, uh, well, first of all, let's just ditch the spent stage that we can do. Okay, this we can deorbit, of course. Alright, we are go for rendezvous. Okay. 
This has lots of spare fuel and I intend to use it to make these rendezvous quickly. Its solar panels though aren't so great. I calculated the solar panel power based on the area and I honestly uh, wrapping the solar panels around the service module isn't great if you're just stuck around low earth orbit for a while. It doesn't seem to provide quite enough power. On the way to the moon, because we're not on the nighttime side, it is. I mean, it recharges on the daylight side. The problem is the depletion on the nighttime side is too severe. Gotta say, these approaches to the large vehicles tend to feel pretty epic. I thought about on the Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 making sort of a ejection system or separation system for the reactor just in case. Um, so it would have uh, separatrons and everything. But decided against it since, well, first of all, nothing's actually going to happen. And I figure, uh, especially with the long trusts, by the time anything happens, um, I mean, reactors don't generally blow up. Um, unless there's uh, the, like hydrogen ignition or something. And uh, yeah, m most problems, they would figure it out with more than enough time to just do a normal undocking. Okay, closing and docked. All right, well now we need to have one of our engineers do what we we're supposed to do here. The reactor really recharges stuff rather quickly. All right, EVA. All hatches are obst. Oh gosh darn it! And there's no airlock. Ah. Uh, well, at this point, I think we'll just have to accept the flaw. It's this. It's this docking port clipped in with this RCS port that I wanted to remove, but with no Kerbal able to do that. I'm not going to send another mission up here just for that, I don't think. Uh, it's a little bit aesthetically displeasing, but on the whole, not urgent. Anyway, let's undock, and uh, since we've charged up, let's uh, go ahead and head to Mars Transfer Vehicle number two. Okay, we are now in render range of Mars Transfer Vehicle two, and ignition. The RCS takes a long while to turn this around. We do have vernier thrusters beside the main engine, so they're a lot better at controlling it. Again, another epic space approach. This time with airlock. At least I remembered to put the airlock on here before I tried to bring the Kerbals. So this time the EVA will hopefully be successful. And there is hydrazine on board. Yes. Yes, there is. Wanted to get a broad scope of the situation here. That's the situation. <laughs> and some planets in the background still in a line. Mercury, Venus, Mars. Interesting alignment. Okay, we are on final approach here. Closing in on the docking port. Okay, we have docked. Let's see, let's have Cactus. Oh, uh, we need to move her to the quest airlock. Okay, Cactus has suited up EVA. And let's get the inventory sorted out. Oh no, no inventory. What happened? Uh, the seat was supposed to have the stuff. Hold on, board. Um, let's see. I definitely double checked that they had tools. All the seats were supposed to have tools. Gemgul's inventory. Yeah, Gemgul has tools. Hmm, maybe moving via Ship Manifest gets rid of the tools? Okay, and I'll try moving Gemgul this way. Am 
Well, it still ends up being ship manifest overriding stock transfers. Okay. Let me double check. Well, it says Cactus's inventory here still. What? Let this game go Kermin and no inventory. Well, okay. First of all, there wasn't this problem before. We definitely did an EVA without any problems before. Well, I mean, I say without any problems. First, we forgot the airlock, then we forgot the hydrazine, but... Um, tools were were involved i wonder if i can seat three she left the tools in her seat is that what happened okay can we like move the tools now maybe okay okay we may be okay all right now gim goal such trouble, I swear. All right, equip, and we're ready to go. Let's rid ourselves of this docking port, and then we need to check on how much how much time our resources give us on this right now. Hopefully, I mean, we want to just have just enough. Not too much, not too little. So if necessary, we'll dump some carefully. Is this the one that's the offending one? I think so. Okay, disassemble part. Poof. We lost some uh, material kits, but there we are. The rest should look all right. Let's just take a quick inspection tour while we're out here. Okay, yep, seems all right to me. Headed back to the airlock. Let's watch out for those solar panels though. So I actually recorded this over the course of three days, a little bit each day, so I have no idea how long this is right now, but I'll wrap it up after this and after checking on the resources. Okay, back in the airlock. And I'll grab and board. Okay, so Gemgul is there, and let's see what we've got as far as our resources. Um, liquid oxygen is all over the place, um, which it often is, I think. 105 years, 104 years, who knows. But let me jot down, the oxygen is also all over the place because the liquid oxygen is too... But we've got two years and 246 days of food. And that's including what we've got in, in the pod, in the Link spacecraft. We probably need 24 more days. I want two years and 270 days. And that should be safe. So I'm going to jot that down. And water, we've got too much. I want six months worth of water. So then... The recycler should be able to take care of the rest. In real life, uh, they normally budget on these Mars missions something like 10-20% uh, of the total time. And that depends on how good they think the recycler is. Again, you get a lot of water from food. So if you've got um, hydrated food, then you have to take that into account. If you've got completely dehydrated food, which for two years and 270 days, hopefully not. But if you did have totally dehydrated food, then um, then you wouldn't be able to get uh, account for any water from the food. But in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul, I believe the assumption is that the food is hydrated and the water is counted in that. 
based on how it normally seems to recycle. So uh, yeah, we want less water. And oxygen we have, I'd say too much of, but oxygen is pretty light. So if we carry four years and 200 days worth, that's varying a little bit there too. Um, but yeah, nitrogen, we might as well keep that as well. The lithium hydroxide is very heavy. So if it's really six years and 92 days, because I, I don't know exactly how much we've gone here, but uh, just as an example, I think the tank at the tip of the of this assembly here, this this tank right here, this is lithium hydroxide, that's two tons. So if we can carry less lithium hydroxide, that'd be great. So yeah, I'll have to think about that. All right, so that's our situation. Overall, the only thing we're really short on is food. And, but this is now a 300 ton vessel. So if we could lose some of this weight, that would be nice. Yeah, and we are already topped off on xenon gas here. We are not topped off on the methane and oxygen, though probably we actually have enough to head up to high orbit just as it is right now. But yeah, I'll take a look in detail about the mass of this thing because 300 tons seems like seems like a lot, right? So we'll see. Anyway, uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.